completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 36, sorting some new model steam engine parts and threading the reversing screw shaft. This is the first part of the sequence showing the fitting of the reversing mechanism. It's quite complicated and if I get it wrong the engine isn't going to work, but apart from that it should be straightforward. I'm not stalling, I need to get on with this job, but I'll show you this bit first. Frequently I have to buy miniature steam parts. I buy these parts directly from my friend Chris at CME Engineering. I have a trade account with Chris at CME Engineering, but the parts are still quite expensive. The main thing is though, the quality is very high indeed, and they're made in the UK. Here I'm showing me putting the parts in some freshly labelled plastic drawers. Generally, I work in a very chaotic environment, but it's most important that I know where the parts are, hence the plastic drawers, all labelled. This is a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch T-piece. I use them for joining pipes, which is their obvious application, but I also use them for fitting displacement lubricators, as I showed in a previous video. I was down to my last one and it was quite beaten up, but now I have quite a few new ones. Finally, I got round to labelling one of the boxes that holds some 3 8 by 32 T-pieces. I use these a lot, they're the centres from double unions. These are 3 16 by 40 double unions. The other sizes that I commonly use are quarter by 40 and 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. It's very useful to have a stock of them. This is a very old, damaged plastic drawer, and I keep my 7BA fixings in this. There's quite a mixture of 7BA fixings in this box, but there's also some studs in there. I buy these from Stuart Models. And I've just bought two more packs, so I think it's time to put them in a box of their own. These studs are very useful, and they save time. They are 15 sixteenths of an inch long, threaded 7BA at each end, and it just saves me making them. I could make my own, but anything that saves time is a good thing for me. Also, as I've mentioned many times, I do not have an engineer's brain, so making these by threading them in the lathe would actually make me need to take some tablets. I'm okay at repetition, provided it's practicing piano or organ, but making all of these one at a time, no thanks. For the same reason, that's why I got my friend Ronnie Mall to make these pair of pumps. I think I can cope with this job though, it's going to be tricky, but I've got a good idea how to do it. I need to fit all of the drop arms that operate the valve gear to this long reversing shaft. I've got a good idea how to do this and I think it's probably going to be quite a simple way to do it. But this episode is not about fitting the reversing gear. It's about cutting a screw thread on the end of this part, the reversing screw. This clip shows the part that the reversing screw is going to fit into and this cannot possibly work. More about this later. I fitted this nice cast hand wheel to turn the reversing screw. I think it's a traction engine steering wheel off a mini traction engine, which is, as its name suggests, quite small. I re-threaded a really nice stainless steel metric dome nut or acorn nut for the end and I've removed that now, which will allow me to thread the shaft in the lathe. The thread required, and shown on the drawing, is 3 16 British Standard Whitworth. It's quite a coarse thread at 24 threads per inch, but if it was any finer, you would be winding the handle forever. I'm going to fit this into a standard die holder. I've got quite a few of these. Most of my dies are actually fitted into them, and I use them with an adapter in my lathe. To be honest though, the adapter really isn't essential. As you will see shortly, I use the lathe's tailstock chuck to make sure that the die is always square to the work. A quick word about die holders like this, as you can see this is a split die and the centre bolt has a point on it so if you tightly screw in the centre bolt after first unscrewing the two outer ones the die will expand and this will make it so that it doesn't cut the thread quite as deep. You don't need to go mad, just tighten the centre screw first then use the two outer screws to hold the die in position to prevent it from revolving in the holder when it's cutting. In my workshop I have three lathes, large, medium and small. The smallest one is my Myford ML7R. And I'm going to use the ML7R because the chuck is small enough to grip this part between the two larger diameter registers. I've applied some cutting lubricant so hopefully I will get a nice clean thread. Let the threading commence. As you can see I'm using the tailstock chuck 
to keep the die holder fully square to the work. I would say that this is about as far away from CNC as you're ever going to get. As I manually rotate the die holder, I'm rotating the hand wheel at the end of the tailstock. This makes sure that the chuck is always in contact with the die holder. I'll show you what I mean. On this very small lathe, it's quite sensitive, and I can feel when I need to turn the wheel to keep the chuck in contact with the die holder at all times. I've increased the speed of the video at this stage, just to prevent any viewers from slipping into a coma. The real threading was a lot slower than this. And after I'd finished, I did get rather a nice thread on this part. And as you can clearly see in this clip, it's a much coarser thread than I would normally use. It's 24 threads per inch, and I think the coarsest one I would normally work with is 26 threads per inch. In the next episode, I will be making a fitting to go in this part, and the fitting will also be threaded 24 threads per inch to match the one on the shaft. That's it for this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.